What's going on guys? My name is Arrow and in today's video I am bringing you what I believe will be my build of the league hit based snipe deadeye Okay, so let's start by talking about the Snipe Gem. Introduce this league. The Snipe Gem is an offshoot of the Asylum Helmet where Snipe originated. Snipe is a skill that is a bit confusing. On its face, it appears to be a gem used to make really, really big ignites or really big poisons from channeling the skill for a while and then letting go and getting that one really, really big hit. But upon further inspection, the gem does a lot more than that. Snipe can trigger multiple skills at the same time. Essentially the way it works is you channel and for each stage that you gain, which is based on your attack speed, you can trigger another skill. So in theory, if you had five stages and you had a six link with the Snipe gem and six different attacks, you could fire all six of those attacks. Now, why is this interesting? But Snipe doesn't just give you the ability to trigger multiple attacks, it gives a massive attack speed multiplier and a massive damage multiplier. A, a skill like Burning Arrow has a base attack speed of 0.7, I believe, and Snipe has a base attack speed of 1.8 which means whatever your attack speed is, it will be multiplied by 1.8 at the base. So you are attacking way, way faster with Snipe than you are with something like Burning Arrow. And Snipe overwrites the Burning Arrow of base attack speed. And because you can trigger multiple skills, it's effectively giving you attack speed, which is enough to fire all of those skills at once. This multiplier can be pretty crazy, but it needs to be balanced properly. The most important thing for me in this build was getting my attack speed high enough. When I clicked snipe, instead of holding to channel, it would fire at least one of my attacks. I found that the base attack rate that you want to get to on snipe is 10 attacks per second. That is one tenth of a second that you need to hold down right click for in order to get one attack off. The higher you go with your attack, speed the faster you can get multiple stages of channeling without really trying to stop and channel the most effective way to play this build is to click for a very brief portion of a second with really really high attack speed to get multiple stages release all of your attacks and then move and do it again now you'll get bigger hits if you stop and channel to full and this can be useful for things like big shocks big freezes or if you go into alternate ailments, which if I rebuilt this build, I would do. But really, ideally, for this build, which uses three attacks, you want to get three stages and then release. The DPS can be a little bit challenging to understand when you're looking at POB, because it's basically calculating the difference between if you were to stand still without snipe and just attack over and over again, which is really not the case with any bow build. Unless you are some giga tank champ build, you're not going to be standing still and just face tanking bosses and attacking them. You're going to attack and move. And with snipe, attacking and moving is a massive damage multiplier. So the goals of this build get super high attack speed so you don't have to really channel very long in order to get all your attacks off and get full screen coverage. That is where Nimus comes in. If we are firing three attacks and we add projectiles to our skills, all of our skills get those projectiles. So we are using lightning arrow, ice shot, and burning arrow. We are adding 10 projectiles to our build, which means each skill gets 10 additional projectiles, and we fire a total of 33 projectiles every time we channel to three. Now, I don't always channel to three while mapping. I usually get one or two, and then when I get to a boss, I'll fire more, and you can choose which order the skills fire in. So I prefer Ice Shot as the first skill to fire, with one chain and all these projectiles, the clear feels really, really nice. I tested all three, and Ice Shot definitely felt the best to me. But a lot of times, I'll accidentally just get to two stacks because I, I have such high attack speed, and then my Lightning Arrow will go off as well. Burning Arrow is the big damage skill here. That is the third one that goes off. I save that for when I have a juicy rare or a, a boss to kill, and then I try to make sure that I'm channeling to three stacks before I move on. The play style is absolutely smooth. I really did expect when I started this that it was gonna feel a little bit clunky, but I promise it is not clunky at all. There's so much clear, there's so little aiming that stopping to channel is just the difference between a quick click and holding for 0.3 seconds. You very quickly get into the habit of quickly clicking as you move through the map and then when you find a little bit juicier of a target, you just hold for another tenth of a second than you would have otherwise and you get that full channel. 
if I were to make this build again, I'm sure there's a lot of things that I would do differently. I would definitely scale into alt ailments because of how massive the hits are in this build. And I also would make it a lot cheaper. I have investment into things like a massive threat of hope because I was spending a lot of currency and I thought, who cares? I'm already spending a lot of money on this bow. I might as well just spend money on other stuff. And the reality is you don't need to spend as much as I did to make this build feel good. You actually don't even need Nimus. I played this build with and without Nimus and the Nimus is just a quality of life fun multiplier. It actually makes it worse, I think, for single target because you're rarely hitting all three of your attacks on single target. So the, the DPS that you see in POB is not going to be 100% uptime. I actually think I might do a snipe hit based build for the 10 divine challenge because this gem is so so interesting and i really think it's being overlooked so we're going to try to get some some more builds out there so let's get into the gear all the mechanics talk about how everything works and get you playing if you want to if you guys are enjoying the content make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel also come check me out on twitch twitch.tv slash aer0 underscore underscore we have a ton of fun over there and we are currently playing gladiator cyclone yes you heard that correctly gladiator cyclone and then we'll probably be starting a new build pretty soon so stop by and say hi okay so we have a level 98 dead eye here there's a lot to talk about and i might jump around a bit but let's talk about the gear we'll start with this bow these bows are probably around 20 divines to buy i crafted this and spent way more than that because i got a little bit lucky and then i hit an additional arrow on the essence spam but then i deleted it and it was incredibly expensive so i recommend you just buy a tri ellie bow with crit chance and attack speed and be done with it because we are using all three uh, ice shot burning arrow and lightning arrow we really want to do all three types of damage instead of trying to do like a fizz conversion so just the biggest ellie bow you can get is what you want next the calm spirit i actually should have a corrupted pair of these things like a frenzy charge attack speed some of them can get pretty expensive the reason i don't have a corruption is i originally planned on using the vols helmet which requires you to not have any corrupted gear and then i just never bought a corrupted one so you can easily get an upgrade in this slot the reason that we use the calm spirit is because get, getting really really high attack speed at all times is super important when we're just sitting here if we hit berserk that alone is enough to make us channel really really quickly up to three and three is your goal always you always want to channel to three and then release unless you're trying to get one big hit on like a boss for a really big shock but three will get all th three of your skills fired so a lot of our gear is going to be based around getting life regen for these gloves to make sure that we have that really really strong uptime of rage and it really is phenomenal we use the rage reduced loss per second helm enchant we get life regen here we get life regen on the boots we really get it in as many places as we can so for the helmet um solving a little bit of a problem here with intelligence um i crafted this myself it was very easy to make some res some regen and then the implicit you want mana reservation efficiency and minus mana cost of skills with uh 22 percent reduced cost here we are down to seven mana per second while channeling and we have about 57 mana available because your frenzy goes off as soon as you start channeling you're going to get leech immediately our mana leech is huge because we also have instant leech so mana really isn't a problem as long as you have a decent pool here and we opt for the minus seven total mana cost for our actual skills that fire because those go off really often and then that ends up costing a lot of mana we could go for the minus three here but i found the minus seven of non-channeling to be a little bit more efficient so i shot uh lightning arrow and burning arrow all cost one mana for the amulet Hero's truth is just a really efficient way to get a ton of good stats we have a level 30 precision which is a lot of crit and a lot of accuracy that solves all of our accuracy uh, and we can use as many dex tattoos as we want as many as we can fit really uh, we get culling strike 60 multi i have uh i have a perfect rolled one here that i put crit mod uh i put crit catalysts on this is actually not a very good quiver i had this quiver in my inventory and then i just never upgraded it the additional arrow is obviously the focus here we want to get as many arrows as we can but the prefixes on this are pretty terrible. I probably should just use a Veiled Chaos Orb or something to redo the prefixes. But the things you want here, damage with bow skills, projectile speed, critical strike multiplier, and a, a big life roll. Having a pierce is good. We get a couple of pierces on the build, but you fire so many projectiles that you don't need that many pierces to get good screen coverage. The Nimbus Ring, obviously this is also a star. 
with the Nimbus, you fire in random directions, and when you charge up, you get 33 projectiles firing in a Nova. You take this off. I found that it still plays really, really well. I uh, I could barely tell the difference, honestly, in coverage, but the Nimbus makes it so you can blink arrow to the center of a pack, press your attack, and clear the entire screen in one touch. It's quite nice, but it really doesn't make or break the build and does add a significant cost. For our other ring, we are also getting more life regen. You can buy one of these for I think a divine or two with really, really good regen on it. Use life catalysts, and then I did some reforging of different elements. I think this was reforge fire until I got two good suffixes and then lock suffixes, veiled chaos to get the life and minus mana cost. The chest is the Snowblind Grace. I'm not 100% sold this is the best option here, but when I first put the build together, I thought I'd be channeling for longer than I ultimately was, and Arctic Armor seemed like something that was necessary for the build. While you're stopped in channeling with this chest on, you have about 35% less fire and physical damage taken, and Arctic Armor doesn't have any reservation. I ultimately didn't get any links on the Arctic Armor. You can empower, enhance, things like that but I just didn't really have anything available. I didn't have any gem slots available for that, but this is really strong. Is it necessary? I'm not entirely sure. Maybe it's better to go for something like a Heeries here to get more damage or a rare chest, but this is okay for now. And the plus two projectile gems is because Snipe is affected by plus levels. So we will get more into the Snipe gem in the gems section. The boots, more life regen. Getting as much as, as possible was really important for me because I wanted as much uptime of this Berserk as you can possibly get with the Calm Spirit gloves. And then it's just life res and move speed. These could be a lot better, but I think I got lucky on a an essence and I hit the life, the move speed, uh, and the regen, so I just kept it. In the belt slot, you really want to get flash charge on crit because we fire so many projectiles, we're hitting so many times per second that you're just instantly filling your flasks up with every attack. Keenan Flash Charge on crit does not stack with itself. You can't get multiple versions of this. You can only get up to one Flash Charge on crit, but this does have a 0.1 second cooldown, which means you can get 10 per second if you're firing fast enough and firing enough projectiles. For the flasks, we have some Chaos Res here. I ultimately did not get very much Chaos Res in this build. Without the flask, we're at negative one, which is not great. I could probably get one more roll somewhere on a piece of gear to help solve that and lower the probably the life regen. Uh, Bottle Faith, super, super strong. Bunch of crit, bunch of damage taken, and the ground regen for us from Consecrated Ground gives us even better uptime on our rage. Jade Flask with attack speed, a Quicksilver Flask with move speed just to go as fast as possible, and then we have a uh, regenerate life suffix on the crit flask in order to keep up better uptime of our Berserk. So let's talk about the gems. So our main links, we have Snipe and linked to three attacks. We have Burning Arrow, Lightning Arrow, and Ice Shot. Again, the order matters. Whatever order you want them to go in, in the six link is how you need to set them up. We have increased crit damage and awaken LA damage with attacks for our two supports. So we effectively have th uh, three, four links in this chest. Anomalous Snipe gives you more damage with hits per snipe stage and less to image with ailments. So this is basically, if you wanna play hit-based snipe, you gotta get the anomalous version. And then when it's socketed in here with our additional levels, it is 125% more damage with hits per snipe stage. So at three stacks, because of the less damage multiplier, when you combine that together, this is 125% more damage from the gem alone. That doesn't include the attack speed boost. So a ton, a ton of damage coming from snipe. In our bow, we have sort of a utility setup here. We have Frenzy linked with Mana Forged Arrows, as well as Power Charge on Critical Strike. This is giving us instant frenzies and power charges uh, on all targets. We have a mark on hit with Sniper's Mark, and all of this is linked to Life Tap. That means the second we start channeling, as you can see, the second we start, our Frenzy goes off. And it goes off pretty consistently. I once I run out of mana, mana, it doesn't go off, but it goes off very consistently. Frenzies are always going off, getting us power charges and getting our leech started, which is really nice. In the helmet, we have a Grace, Haste, and Herald of Ice linked to a an Enlightened support. Honestly, Herald of Ice, not necessary. 
Uh, I would actually go as far as to say it's a waste. I love Herald of Ice. I always want to have those shatters and explosions going on. This build gets a lot cheaper if you don't need an Enlightened 4 and you don't need a Herald of Ice. Uh, I really would recommend not using it if you make this build. Unless you're like me and you just need to have your Automaton Herald of Ice shatters. We use Vol Haste and Vol Grace. Just kind of pop them both at the same time. The build as is has 80% chance to evade and then when I pop my Vol Grace, I'm at 95%. Vol Haste, obviously just a chunk of move speed and attack speed. We love both of those things. In the boots, Divergent Ar Arctic Armor, 21% uh, less Fizz, 21% less Fire, which is then boosted by the Snowblind Grace. We have a Blood Rage, just for more attack speed, and then a level 1 cast one damage taken, Immortal Call. Anytime you're going to use a low level Immortal Call in your build, you should always go buy one with at least 20 quality. 23 is even better, and it's not that expensive. It gives you a bunch of extra skill effect duration, which uh, may be enough to save your life. In the gloves, we have a fun little enhanced setup. An enhanced level three is fine too, but a four gets you over the breakpoint to get a third blink arrow. So phantasmal blink arrow gives you an additional cooldown use, and with a level four enhanced, you get two cooldown uses. I find that blink arrow is unusable unless you have this setup, and if you do have this setup, it's one of the best movement skills in the game with high attack speed. So we link that to faster attacks, and then over here we have a, a berserk, with uh, also linked to this enhanced support. All right, let's talk about the tree. We have a couple of major expenses here. The first one is the massive threat of hope. I really don't think this is necessary. I like, you got some good life here. We already have plenty of recovery, so the life on kill is not, not that important. A little bit of attack and move speed here is nice. Again, some life, but you could just path over to forces of nature and lose a little bit of life. And I think these are like 30 something divines. They're just, it's just absolutely not worth it. Also, you lose a bunch of res, then you have to deal with that. So unless you have like an insane lethal pride where you need to take all these points, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the lethal pride that I have has a bunch of fizz taken as fire to help with physical mitigation. It doesn't have that much damage, to be honest. I think we have, we have one double damage and then three fizz taken as fire. And then over here we have endurance charge on kill, which, which is nice. So during mapping, we have our endurance charges up. And then life fire res. This is, I think this was, the, I think I paid like 50 Z for this. You can get better ones. Uh, I definitely recommend the lethal pride though for strength because it pretty much solves our strength problem by itself. We have an inspired learning up here because inspired learning for a build like this is just phenomenal. And then we have uh, another star of the show here, which is the warrior's tail. With the warrior's tail, we are getting plus two proj, plus two proj here and here. Now these are very expensive. And if you're playing the Nimbus version, you have to get all these additional projectiles or else your, your coverage won't be good enough. And you, and more importantly, you will not be landing enough arrows on your single targets because arrows are fired randomly. Unless you are right on top of the boss and you have low projectiles, you're going to miss a lot with a lot of your skills. If you get enough projectiles, you get next to the boss, all three of your attacks are going to hit it every time. And then they're also going to hit it on the way back. So you can actually expect full DPS uptime on bosses if you get all these proj. I also have another one down here. That's three total. I think it's like 25 divines. So not, not, a, not a small cost. And then of course you also have to reroll this uh, node here. The Impaler doesn't do anything for us. It just doesn't break the build. I got pretty lucky, I think. Uh, I just used one tattoo, which was like two and a half divines, and re-rolled this to the Impaler. You just re-roll this until it's something that doesn't hurt the build. If you get something that's good for the build, wonderful. Um, but if it breaks it, you gotta keep going. We have two more projectiles here and here. That's how we get to uh, 11 total arrows per skill. We are fully tattooed. We've got some blind. We've got chaos res. We've got some life. Uh, we've got some projectile speed. Really, tattoos are kind of your your choice. What do you really want? Uh, we really don't have any chaos res, so I have a lot of those tattoos in. Something else fun is this life gain on hit here. It's 10 life per enemy hit, and then a 15% ch chance for 200 life on hit with attacks. We are firing so many projectiles that even on single target, this procs almost every single attack and can also proc multiple times per channel. So a ton of life gain back here. And then the real reason we want this is the recovery mastery that says every four seconds, 
recover one life for every 0.1 life recovery from regen. We have a lot of regen in this build that gets converted over to rage regen, but this allows you to just get a huge chunk of life every four seconds, and it feels very, very nice. We get crit immunity from marked enemies from the mark mastery. Unfortunately, we have to take a few random nodes. So this is a dead node. This is not terrible. It's increased flash charges gained, but we're taking it just to enable the tattoos. You have to have seven connected. Now, for the most part, these are not very bad. Uh, these are all connected. We were using most of these anyway. We were using most of these anyway. So not so bad. Uh, one of the massive stars of the show here is the elemental mastery that says hits have a 25% chance to treat mo enemy monster res as inverted. We don't get a lot of monster lowered resistances. We don't have exposure for all three of our types. We don't have really any sources of uh, enemy res being lowered from things like frostbite or conductivity. So this is a massive boost to our damage. We do get some pen, we get things like forces of nature. So this node alone gives us a ridiculous damage multiplier. Because we're far shot, I highly recommend getting knocked back on crit. This means you're basically knocking enemies back constantly. You're keeping them farther away. And it's a great survivability boost on a build like this, which fires projectiles in all directions. Let's talk about the ascendancy. Chain is unbelievable quality of life for just keeping up full screen clear. Getting at extra projectiles, obviously fantastic for what we're doing. Far shot is really, really nice damage. Even if you were right on top of the boss, the returning projectile gets the full 60% more. So if you keep a little bit of distance, you're going to get most of the far shot on the way out and all of it on the way back. And it's a very, very big multiplier. It's substantially better than focal point. And then gathering wins. Anything that gives us more attack speed and move speed is good for us. So I think I covered everything. Hope you guys enjoy this build. It was so, so much fun. Anything that can clear maps this way and also do things like the feared is just really, really a great overall build. I didn't try Ubers with it because it's not very tanky and I just don't like doing Uber bosses anyway. So I almost certainly would have failed and been miserable, but with the amount of damage that you can get on this, if you got a little bit of skill, you probably can do Ubers with it as well. But you shouldn't do Ubers because they're, they're bait. Ubers are bait. If you have any questions, stop on my Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I will try to answer any questions over there. We are currently playing a Gladiator Cyclone build, which is awesome. There's going to be a video for that coming pretty soon. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Lots more stuff coming. I'll be playing PUE for the entirety of the league. So plenty more content to come. If you like what I do, you can support me by commenting, liking the video, subscribing, subscribing on Twitch, joining my Patreon, buying some merch. All those links are down in the description below. I appreciate all of your support. I couldn't do this without you. So thank you so much. And as always, take care.